Welcome to the Real Lost Boss podcast. Hello, welcome to episode 14 of the Real Lost Boss podcast. There is no perfect weight loss journey. That is what we're going to discuss in this episode. It's something that I struggled with for years and years and years. I felt you had to do everything bang on perfect to have a successful weight loss journey. And I might have done great for three, four, five, six weeks at a time. And just that little blip or bump in the road, because it is a journey, and I just fall off the wagon. I just give up. I quit everything, everything I was doing because of one thing that I felt I had done wrong. And I honestly can't think of anything in life where we need to be a hundred percent perfect to be successful. You know, some of the most qualified people in the world are doctors. Do you think your GP that you go and you put your your life in their capable hands got 100% on every single exam they didn't? Driving, you know, I have no idea what it is now because it's over 25 years since I passed my driving test. But I think when I passed my driving test, you could have six or eight minors and still pass. So you didn't need to be perfect. I'm a football fanatic and A team that wins the Premier League, you know, very rarely. I think Arsenal did it once. But, you know, they're not 100% perfect. Even when Arsenal went a season unbeaten, they still had a few draws in there. And most of the time, when a team wins the Premier League title, they might lose three, four, five games in that season. And again, they're the most successful team, but they have not been perfect. And your weight loss is no different. So why do we think... We have to be perfect to have a successful weight loss journey. And, you know, honestly, I think there's a few different reasons. Maybe it's down to fad diets. Maybe it's just down to the fact that, you know, the lack of education around food and how weight loss or weight gain works has given most people, whether they've got a weight issue or not, a really unhealthy relationship with food. So, you know, a lot of people categorize food as this makes me fat. And this makes me thin. And it just doesn't work like that. Throughout my years of trying to lose weight until I started my last weight loss journey in 2014, and it will be my last weight loss journey. There's nothing going to change about that. Um, You know, I tried to lose weight. I can't remember how many times I've, I've lost count. And I'm not saying this is the only reason why I failed on a weight loss journey, but Definitely, you know, a lot of the times that I failed on my weight loss journeys um, was because that little self-destruct button that you press when you just have, as I've already said, that one little bump in the road, that little blip. I remember probably maybe 20 years ago doing the uh, the Slim Fast plan and um Shake for breakfast, 200 calories. Shake for lunch, 200 calories. And then you have like meat and veg for your tea. And basically it was 800 calories a day. And that was the diet. That was the plan. And I remember doing it and I did it for two solid weeks. And then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the week after. So I did it for 19 days. Now, knowing what I know now, you know, at the size I was in my early 20s, I will have burned four, four and a half thousand calories a day. And I'm eating 800 calories a day. So I'm in a 3,500 calorie deficit a day. Like I aim to achieve that now per week. I was in that per day. That's a one pound of fat loss a day. So over 19 days, I'd have lost 19 pounds of body fat. Uh, And I remember getting, I think it was around March time when I did it. Um, And we just had a freak Saturday where mid to the end of March, it will have been, the weather was amazing. And, um, you know, you get that little, it certainly wouldn't have been, I don't think on uh, on Facebook then, because I wasn't on Facebook then. It probably was a phone call from some mates or something like that. I uh, did have mobile phones then. Um, okay, have you seen the weather? The sun shining. Do you fancy the pub? Yes, of course I fancy the pub. And I went to the pub for the day and had a good few beers. And I woke up on the Sunday and I was hungover and I had a hangover day. And on Monday, instead of just drawing a line and going, do you know what? 
I've had a little blowout weekend. Let's get back to it. I didn't. I was just like, oh, well, I've blown it now. Blown my diet now. Now, don't get me wrong. I think when you do something as unsustainable as the as the uh, slim fast diet, um, a bit like the Cambridge plan or something like that, or if you're just trying to track calories and eat a stupidly low amount, like 800 to 1,000 calories a day, you're always constantly looking for that excuse to give it up because it is so unsustainable. But yeah, I just shrugged my shoulders and uh, and gave it up. To have a successful weight loss journey, we do have to get into our mentality that there is no such thing as a perfect weight loss journey. And we've got to stop setting these like parameters, is it? Or goals, should I say, um, that are just so unachievable long term. One of my big sayings is a long term problem will always require a long term solution. And for most people, a weight issue is a long term problem. So if we're going to do something that basically we're setting ourselves up to fail before we even start, uh, yeah, the chances of success is going to be very, very limited. So what do we do that, that, you know, or what do we set ourselves, these goals that we set ourselves um, that just means or make, basically makes it impossible for us to be perfect? The common one is food. And it's cutting out whole food groups. Now, that might be cutting out carbohydrates, very, very common with the keto plan. Or it might just be cutting out, you know, I'm never going to eat a takeaway till I hit my goal weight. I'm never going to eat, um, you know, chocolate until I hit my goal weight. Foods that you feel you you massively overconsume, you go from one extreme to another. You go from over uh, consuming these foods to just banning them out of your diet altogether. And we feel that that is the right thing to do. And it really, really isn't. What we have to do with food is learn some self-control. We have to. Because there's always going to be temptation to eat all different types of food. And that temptation will never be demonised enough in society to, to help you. And what I mean by that is, I never know quite how to phrase it, but if someone's been an alcoholic, Right, and they walk into a pub, and someone says, "Would you like a drink?" And they go, and and they don't really know who that person is, or you know, it might be a meeting, or you might be on a first date, or it might just be you're out with a friend, and then another friend walks in, and you're not kind of in the same uh, circle, or your two friends aren't in the same circle, whatever. They say, "Oh, it's my round. What are you having? Uh, I'm just having a diet coke. Oh, don't be so soft. Have a pint." I'm a recovering alcoholic, so and you and literally the person that's offered him a drink. Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry, so sorry. Diet coke, not a problem, right? Straight away. If someone said to you, you went to like a kid's birthday party, or you went to a friend's wedding and and the wedding breakfast came out, the dessert came out, and it was you know chocolate fudge cake, uh, and you literally went, yeah, I'm not going to eat that. Why are you not eating it? I'm a recovering chocoholic. People go, oh, don't be so daft. And that, honestly, I think that's one of the main reasons why. And it shouldn't be like that, but that's the way it is. And I think that's one of the reasons why it's so, so hard to quit foods. And there is really no reason to quit foods. You know, there's actually no major evidence to show food is an addiction. It's more a very bad habit. Though I do believe there is a type of food addiction. But where you might get massive withdrawals from things like nicotine when it comes to smoking and alcohol or, you know, uh, certain types of drugs, like I say, there's no major evidence about that food has that, but it is a habit thing. Anyway, I'll do another podcast on that. Uh, anyway, so yeah, it's very, very hard to 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 cut foods out. And there really is no, no need. Now, don't go wrong, it takes a lot of effort to learn self-control, but you can do it because I have done it and I'm not a special person. I'm not an anomaly. I'm not, you know, some random freak of nature. I'm not. And I've taught a lot of my clients self-control when it comes to food as well. Anyway, so setting yourself out these goals, I'm not going to eat this, I'm not going to eat that. Likewise, what else do we do on a weight loss journey when it comes to uh, setting out this this perfect, you know, sort of thing that we're going to do to, to, to absolutely smash our weight loss? Um, fad diets. Fad diets set out this strive for perfection. You know, um, 
Slimming World. I know it's a bit of a contested thing about whether you can bank cal uh, sins, sorry. Um, so if you go to Slimming World, you get 15 sins a day and you can bank them daily uh, and then use them all up on a Saturday night. I know it's not officially in the Slimming World plan, but I know some people that have done that in the past and I kind of get it. It certainly works better than sticking to the same amount of sins every, every day. But anyway, the sin thing is just way too restrictive. It sets out like you know, a perfect form of eating where calorie dense foods are only going to make up an extremely small uh, proportion of what you eat on a day to day pace, uh, basis. And again, it's striving for, for perfection and it isn't going to happen. Likewise, like I've already said, cutting out food groups, doing the keto plan, you're not allowed to eat carbs. Um, again, is that going to happen for a long period of time? Not for many people, it's not. Uh, other things we put into place, and again, this is down to a little bit of a, a whole bad relationship with weight loss on a whole, but uh, things like exercise. We put so much emphasis on exercise and you need to go to the gym every day. And I always call it the January syndrome. And I noticed this, I kind of noticed this from just being a regular of going to the gym. And, you know, I've been a regular in, in a gym now for over nine years, but um, January, 2019 and January 2020, I was a personal trainer in a gym. And you notice it's a lot uh, a lot more then because you're spending 40 to 50 hours a week I I in a gym. And you would see these people. And I noticed it. And literally, someone would come in, in uh, you know, beginning of January. There's obviously a bit of a deal on or every Tom, Dick and Harry's on a health kick in January. And they come into the gym and they'd walk on a treadmill for an hour, five, six days a week. Uh, and they'd do that for a month and then you'd never see him again. And then that same person would walk in, in in January 2020 and do exactly the same thing and then never see them again. And this is because the, the, they're setting themselves out this unsustainable plan. And first of all, I need to exercise pretty much every single day uh, to lose weight, which you don't. Um, and they set off with all these good intentions. And when it becomes unsustainable, which it will. So you miss going to the gym for a couple of days in a row and suddenly, boom, everything gets chucked, you know, out the window. So how do we, how do we change our mindset? Well, first of all, we just need to accept that there is no such thing as a perfect weight loss journey. You know, if you're in a calorie deficit for three, four, five, six weeks, and you lose six or seven pounds, and then you have a, a a weekend where you have a bit of a heavy weekend. It might be a friend's birthday. It might just be, do you know what? I've had six weeks being on it. I just fancy a little blowout, right? We do have to understand that, you know, a couple of high calorie days is not gonna counterbalance six or seven weeks of being in a calorie deficit. It just is isn't and again this is down to an unhealthy relationship with weight loss so we just need to improve our whole relationship with weight loss and a big part of that as i've already said is understanding that there is no such thing as a perfect weight loss journey and when we start our weight loss journey we need to stop putting in these unsustainable things. We need to put things into place that we know we're going to be able to stick to. So rather than going to extremes, because there really is, honestly, I'm telling you this from the bottom of my heart, there really is no need. And it is just a big factor to people stopping their weight loss journey or falling off the wagon as it is. Um, you know, weight loss needs to be healthy and sustainable. So Instead of saying to yourself, I'm never going to eat chocolate again until I hit my goal weight, or I'm just never going to eat chocolate again, set yourself some like treat nights. This is what I did on, on my weight loss journey. So things that I really overconsumed at 37 stone were takeaways. Yep, absolutely battered takeaways. Four or five, well, I say four or five a week. Probably, I think I'm probably doing myself a bit of a, a, a disservice there. I certainly definitely had a takeaway three nights a week. Definitely. Some weeks it will have been more. The odd rare week it might have been less. If I counted takeaways in terms of breakfast, lunch and dinner, right? So if I counted all three or as I'm a northerner, should I say breakfast, dinner and tea? Um, yeah, I probably had seven or eight takeaways a week because, you know, if I was out working, I might have a chippy dinner. Uh, you know, I might have a chippy dinner, then I might have a pizza for my tea. 
So um, takeaways was an issue for me. But rather than saying I'm never going to eat a takeaway ever again, I just gave myself a treat night, which was Sunday night. And I had a Chinese. Chinese at the time was my, it kind of is my favourite takeaway now. Um, it's that and pizza. I'm, I'm a bit, I'm a bit tied with both. I, I love Italian food. That's probably my favourite type of food. But in terms of really enjoying the takeaway, anyway, most Sunday nights I had a Chinese, and it was kind of a bit of a family tradition, and um, we just had a Chinese on a Sunday night, and I carried on with that. Uh, but instead of you know ordering enough food from the Chinese to feed you know a family, um, I just started having a main course from rice. And last Sunday of, of the month, I had a starter main course from rice because it was last Sunday of the month. Just give myself a little treat as it's the last, you know, Sunday of the month. Um, I also had a chippy tea most Wednesday nights. I didn't actually, it was a takeaway, of course, but I didn't class this as like a takeaway because I had what I classed as quite a lean chippy. So I used to get a large, very lightly battered fish. So I used to go in the chippy and say, can I batter it as lightly as possible, please? Uh, and the people that worked there knew that I was on this wellness journey, so they obliged me as best they could. Uh, and I used to get a large mushy peas, and I actually didn't class that as being something that was... But still, I had that most Wednesday nights. Again, family tradition. Uh, chippy tea Wednesday night, Chinese on a Sunday night. Also, I used to drink way too much alcohol. Uh, and instead of going, I'm never going to drink alcohol... So, Sorry, let's just go back to the takeaway thing. So instead of going to these extremes of, of, of having probably takeaway, if I count all main meals, breakfast, uh, dinner and tea, having eight a week or maybe a few more than that, I went to having the ma a maximum of two, you know, a maximum of two. So it was making a compromise, not a sacrifice, another big saying of mine. Likewise, yeah, like I just said, uh, I used to drink too much alcohol. And in terms of going to the pub and drinking, um, yeah, rather than saying I'm never going to go to the pub ever again, I still used to go every Friday night, still see my mates, still have a couple of beers. On a Friday when I went to the pub, I used to go to the pub as soon as I finished work or certainly by mid-afternoon I'd be in the pub and sometimes I'd be there till four or five o'clock in the morning. And on my weight loss journey, still went to the pub on a Friday, but I used to go about half seven, eight o'clock at night time and I'd finish at 10 and I'd just have four pints. I'd literally give myself, um, yeah, four pints and I'd either have a bag with my last pint or take a bag home with me and enjoy it in bed when I got home, a bag of port scratchings. Again, a compromise, not cutting things out, not trying to do this. I'm never drinking again. I'm never eating takeaways again just being a lot more responsible with the things that I felt, you know, I abused, right? That certainly were calorific or, you know, affected me controlling my calories. Um, you know, and that's what you need to do. You need to just be more responsible, certainly with things that, um, that you, that you abuse. And, like I say, if you've got a massive problem with alcohol, yeah, you might need to quit it. I did have, a, I drank way too much, but looking back at it, back at it, I drank too much, and I know I've done a podcast on on alcohol and, and weight loss. I do feel I drank a lot because I was lonely and because I didn't have anything else in my life. As soon as I put more things into my life from losing my weight, like going to the gym and stuff, that really cut down. It would have naturally cut down on it anyway. Um. Other things that we need to put into place are accepting that we can have the odd night out. We can enjoy a holiday. We can enjoy Christmas. If we actually think about it, you know, no one has a weight issue because they enjoy celebrating their birthday or because they enjoy Christmas or because they go to Tenerife or Benador once or twice a year, all inclusive for a week, right? No one. If you say, you know, you go on holiday twice a year, that's 14 days. And then Christmas is another week. So that's 21 days. You enjoy your birthday and maybe a hangover day afterwards. That's 23 days. Your best friend gets married or you go to an all day wedding maybe once a year. And, and again, enjoy the wedding day and a hangover day. You then have, you know, Barbara's 50th one night and your mum and dad's wedding anniversary. Let's say throughout the year, you have 36 days or 36.5 days, if you want to be pedantic, where you don't give a toss about calories. You do what you want. Yeah, that is only 10% of the year. 
Why we have a weight issue is what we do the other 90% of the year. If you spend every day like it's your birthday or like it's Christmas day or like you're at your best friend's wedding or celebrating Barbara's 50th, that is the issue. And again, so when we have these little, what we might class as a little bump in the road, and that's all it is, yeah, um, we need to accept that's part of life. And another saying of mine, I'm coming out with a few of them in this podcast, if you try and either live life or do weight loss, you are going to fail at both. Your weight loss journey has to be part of your everyday life and you have to accept you can't be perfect all the time. Same with exercise, you know. Exercise is, the direct effect of exercise on weight loss is a little bit irrelevant if I'm being totally honest with you. Yes, it burns some calories, uh, but that's the only direct effect and you don't burn as many calories as you think. Greg Wallace, the guy that does Master Chef and uh, a few other bits and pieces, he goes around factories looking at different foods. He's lost a lot of weight, like five stone. And, and one of his videos popped up on TikTok the uh, the other week, and I actually quite liked it. It sort of resonated with me what he said, and he said he said about exercise. It's something I've talked about a lot, um, but. I just like the way he put it. And he said, you go to a gym and you see people all different shapes and sizes, yet they are all exercising. So that just shows it's not the exercise that causes the weight issue or helps with weight loss. It's what we do in the kitchen, basically. It's what goes in our mouths. And and he's right, you know. I know I've got friends that go to the gym five times a week, train really, really hard, Um but they do have a weight issue and that's because they they struggle to control, you know, what they eat because that is the main main sort of focus. So again, if we're going to put things into our life like doing some regular exercise, trying to dedicate an hour a day, six days a week, plus commuting to the gym, commuting back from the gym, having a shower and getting changed afterwards, you know, that can take probably two hours out of your day, you times that by five or six and you're taking 12 hours out of your week. That's a lot of time to dedicate. And for a lot of people, again, they're going to struggle with that to be consistent. So yes, there is no perfect weight loss journey. An analogy I like to use is a journey I do you know weight loss is a journey and we're all on the same journey we're just at different points of it towards the destination and you know I always I've used this uh saying or analogy or however you want to say it um from the start of of being the real lost boss and putting content out there and you know I live in in just outside Blackpool and if I was to drive from Blackpool to London it's about 250 miles and it takes you know however long it takes but if I set off uh, irrelevant of what time of day it is there is a chance on that journey I'm going to hit traffic that's going to slow me down a little bit Uh, I might get stuck in a traffic jam that's really going to slow me down I'm certainly going to have to stop at services once or twice for a bit of food and to go to the toilet yeah, I might get a puncture, right? I might get, um, I might take a wrong turn, right? I might come off at the wrong junction and get a little bit lost. But one thing I can guarantee, it doesn't matter how many bumps in the road I hit, how many traffic jams I hit, it doesn't matter how many times I stop at the services, as long as I keep going, I will get to my destination. It's just the more things that might crop up on that journey, it just might take a little bit longer, but it still will not stop me reaching my end goal of driving from Blackpool to London. And that's how we need to look at our weight loss journey. If you set off on this journey and it's all plain sailing for the first 45 minutes, stroke three, four months, and then suddenly it's your best friend's birthday and you're going to go for a night out, that's just you stopping at the services and having a toilet break, right? Right? And then you crack on with your journey for another two months and then you go to Tenerife for a week all inclusive. Well, that's you getting stuck in an accident and a little bit of traffic for 45 minutes. Yeah. And then you crack on and then, do you know what? You might have a puncture and that might be a little point in time that just sends you off kilter for four or five weeks. It might happen. 
But rather than that little thing sending you off kilter for four to five weeks, um, sorry, sending you off kilter for five or six months, if it just sends you off kilter for four to five weeks, and while you are stuck at the side of the road, waiting for the AA to come and change your tyre, you still try your very best to stay in control, even though you might not be 100% at it, yeah, it's just going to be, again, a little pause button. That's all it is. So, if you do something that, might not be what you're trying to do on a day-to-day -day basis. A successful weight loss journey is about being consistently in a calorie deficit. And consistency, and I have this written on every one of my one-to-one -one clients' plans. Always remember this. Consistency is about doing what we need to do more often than not. It is not about being perfect because there is no perfect weight loss journey. If you do what we need to do 80, 90% of the time, you are going to have a very good weight loss journey. If you do what we need to do 60, 70% of the time, you will still get to your goal. It will just take you a little bit longer. But if it takes you a little bit longer, and that makes the journey less restrictive and less feeling like it's a chore or hard work, then it's worth extending the time it's going to take to get to that goal. So change your mindset. Understand there is no perfect weight loss journey. Every little high calorie day here and there, a week's holiday in Tenerife, a week in Christmas, a week at Christmas enjoying yourself. Yeah. And another thing before I wrap this podcast up, we also need to understand there are certain points in time where weight loss doesn't need to be the priority. Again, coming back to Christmas, the priority at Christmas is making memories with friends and your family and having fun. Because we just get back to our journey in January. Likewise, going on holiday with your kids. Kids grow up quick cherish the time with them at certain points and shuffle that weight loss priority pack. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that for the odd week here and there. Because like I say, all it is on your journey is a little bump in the road, a little stop at the services for a pee break, you know, or maybe a little bit of where you're stuck in traffic because there's been a bit of an accident or there's some roadworks. So finally, I think I've said it about six times in the last few minutes, we have to understand and we have to appreciate to have a successful weight loss journey. We are not striving for perfection. We are striving for consistency. And consistency is about doing what we need to do more often than not. It's not about being perfect. Why? Because there is no such thing as a perfect weight loss journey. There you go. I got there in the end. Uh, guys, I hope you've enjoyed that one. I hope you found it a help. It's, uh, you know, designed to try and change your mindset, which is something we really have to work on when it comes to having success on our weight loss journey. We do have to change our whole relationship with weight loss. Um, there you go. Whatever format or platform you're watching this on, please follow, like, subscribe, leave me a comment all that jazz. That would be absolutely superb. Uh, and until next time, as always, I hope this helps you boss your weight loss. <laughs>